Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to season two of the Stephanie Stevens Show, right here on Pronoun TV. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for season two, and hopefully a lot of you will support the show and spread the word, share the love. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about transphobia and bullying. And today we have Mr. Russell Mania in the house tonight. And he's going to talk about his experience. He's really um, concerned about a lot of things happening in the two-spirit pronoun community. And sometimes we just have to take action. And that's what Russell um, is has decided to do. So today on the show, we're going to talk about um, transphobia and bullying and what we can do to improve our relationships with each other in our community. Because the, um, the LGBT two-spirit pronoun community seems to be having a lot of issues with each other about how they identify or how they feel about the way you look or you don't look or what you have or what you don't have. So Russell's gonna help put a little bit of an, um, some education into us and hopefully we can inspire others so we can do better within our community. Now, I wanna start off with saying that this was the meaning of transphobia from Google in Wikipedia. It says, it says transphobia, I'm sorry, transphobia. It says um, it's transgender or gender non-conforming people may experience harassment or discrimination from people who are scared or uncomfortable with their identities. These, that's what it says. So um, hopefully Russell Mania will clarify this for us a little bit more. So welcome to the show, Mr. Russell Mania. How you doing? I'm great. Here we are in Florida, waiting for oh. the next storm. Yes. Yeah. Are you? Are you? Is 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 the weather really bad there? Not yet, but you know it's summer. You know what happens in the summer in Central Florida about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm from I'm from yeah. Orlando, and you know, Florida is swamp land. Mm -hmm. Everything is built built on swamp land. So you know, it's it's what it is, and you know, it's I love. Florida, and I love the beautiful weather and the in the lifestyle and the mere fact of it's just a great place to live if it wasn't for all the hurricanes and the and the bad weather. But it's a great place to retire. Now, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on to the show. Like I said, I had you here last year and for season one, and now we're back for season two, and you look fabulous. Thank you. So do you. You look fabulous. So now let's talk about transphobia and bullying in our community. Now, you know, regret um, and just overall hatred, our community is deep seated with these kind of things. Um, rebellion, hatred, revenge, just overall stigmatizing people from the way they look or their race or gender. It's, it's, can you explain to us today what transphobia and bullying means to you? And what do you think we need to do to bridge the gap between what's happening in the gay community? Okay, first of all, Stephanie, thank you for having me back on. And mm -hmm. um, I've been silent a little bit too long, and uh, I've been kind of afraid to speak out because being an entertainer, you could shun yourself and lose some bookings. But it gets to the point where I can't just sit by and let this keep on going. Um, we've always had our little classes of distinction, even when I was younger, you know, the drag queens and the leather puppies, and they didn't like each other, some of them, and you know, but I will say this, when the leather puppies needed something to need money raised, where did they go? To the drag queen. Oh, yes. Say that, because the drag queen 
is the center of the fundraising events in our community. It's always been that and will probably always be. That being said, the bullying in the, in the transphobia that's been going on is I'm gonna give you an example of what just recently happened here in, in, in St. Pete. We have a prominent pageant drag queen winner. Mm -hmm. I'm talking uh, at least state, maybe national titles. I don't wanna mention names because it's- Yeah, please don't mention no names. It's, it's tacky. Okay. Uh, but, it's, but she was having an argument with a trans man on mm -hmm. social media. And then she ended it by saying, sit down, little girl. Uh -huh. And that, the person that was said it about was, is very nice, is a very nice, very nice uh, man. Mm -hmm. um, and didn't deserve that. And I feel um, if you have a, personally, if I was a pageant promoter, and you are a current title holder, and you say crap like that, you lose your crown. Mm -hmm. okay? Because you are representative of the gay community. You're supposed to be the, 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 the you know, you're supposed to be a person you could go to uh, when you need help. And, and, and you are a representative of the gay community. You were, you know, I, I don't know. It just bothers me. But, but what bothers me is Yes, that person's feelings was hurt, but he got over it. But let's think about this for a minute. You have the young, for every one person that's out, there's probably three or four or more that aren't. Mm -hmm. And you have a young trans person who wants to come out. Their family is not so accepting. So they want to come out to a safer area and they can't because this stuff is going on and what's supposed to be a safe place. Mm -hmm. And that was brought up as well by, I was thinking this, but this was said by the person that he, that was, he was attacked. Now, what I want to say also is the answer to that is not to attack the other person and bring them down. The answer is to make them accountable for what they said without bullying them. Mm -hmm. It's no different. We can't shade people or shame people into that. And I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna turn myself in for a second. I'm a stand-up comic. I said something that was offensive to the um, and it wasn't intended because mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking. When you're a comedian, it's a different thing altogether. You go for a joke. Oh, I know. And Comedy so, sticky. It's it's a little sticky now. It's like so I got <laughs> called on it and I and I thought about it and I can say the same Jake now, but what I do is I just make it about me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even gonna mention it now because it's silly. But I make it about me now, and it's just as funny. When I realized that sometimes you have to think about how your words impact, I'm not just a stand-up comic. In, a, in the stand-up comic world, I'm WrestleMania. And I have a lot of following and I represent the gay community as well with me being an entertainer. And I have to really kind of watch what I say and how it meant. So I owned up to it and I apologize for it, okay? Mm -hmm. And the shaming ended, I got a couple of people that will just stay corrected. But they didn't do it on Facebook, they did it privately. That's how you do something. You don't go on the don't go on social media and 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 say this person's a bitch or whatever. Oops, sorry, they say you know say mm -hmm. I'm being real. You it's don't you don't do that. There's true. no point in doing that. You only make yourself look stupid. If you have something to say to that person, you send them a private message, or better yet, you wait and you talk to that person in person and say, what what was that? Why did you say that? This is a teaching moment. Maybe they're ignorant. They, did, they don't know what they did is wrong. But if you go and attack them and say, oh, this was horrible and you're nothing but a da 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 and this and that, then you're just as bad bullying them and they're never going to learn their lesson because they're going to be boom, like that. They're going to be defensive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to be a loving environment. And well, well, you know, 
you know, Russell, it's it's I like the fact that you're speaking out about this. This is like this is not something that's new in our community. Our community has been fighting this, 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 these different racisms and these different um, gender misconforming issues for a very long time. And it's it's gotten worse as social media has exploded around the world. And that's people, the pandemic has made people more in communication now than ever. So now people really feel free. They feel like they can just be free to say anything because of social media and because they, they're not working at the bars that they work at. They don't see you as often. So then they don't have to be accountable for their actions right away because they know that by the time we get out of this pandemic, they think you will be can forgot what has transpired within the social media world because you know information is like this now. We're bombarded with so much noise that one story mutes the next story. You know what I mean? But for some reason we keep going back to the transphobia and the bullying. So it is a real issue for us. And I, you know, I thank you for speaking up because, you know, sometimes we just have to say it the way it is. I, yeah, and, and, and really what, really what this is all about, if you get down to the psychological end of it, it's probably these people have some issues with themselves and they're lashing out because they want to feel better about themselves by putting other people down or whatever. I understand the anger of what of some of the things was said. And this particular person has also used the N-word, has also made racist rants. And the um, national hamburger chain that hired her, okay, see, I didn't say the name, but we all know what I mean. Mm-hmm didn't make a public apology for her behavior um, and did, was not quick to remove her. Um, mm -hmm. You make a mistake, you own up to it, you you know. Um, and I'm beginning to believe that that particular hamburger chain really doesn't give a damn about the gay community at all. I think they're out there to make a quick buck and that's my opinion and my opinion only. But you told me to keep it real. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, well, um, we know the, the, a lot of straight businesses and even our own our own um, entrepreneurs or promoters in our community has exploited us forever. And so yeah. they're they're all out just to make a fast start and they really could care less about the gay community or about um, any of the real issues in the gay community. They just care about their the what what they can put in their pockets yeah. as quickly as as quickly as possible. <clears throat> now now this trans man, did he did he go in defense of himself? He went on and actually he did a very classy thing and he said that please do not argue for me that this person needs love. This person has no love in their heart and need to find it. He, he took the high road um, and that's what made me think of, because, you know, he's the one that brought up the fact that we need to educate. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and it was just a, a, a beautiful thing. And, you know, um, it, it, it really kind of all started with a, with, a, with a questionable pageant that, you know, you know how pageants are. I know how pageants and, are. And it's there. It scores, scores change and they make a mistake. They added it wrong. And, you know, and then everybody's like, rig, rig, rig. I don't, you know. <laughs> You know, should everybody relax, mm -hmm. okay? Relax, well, you know, okay? well, you know, Russell, just... it's, it's great to see that trans men now are standing up for themselves. I see them all over social media talking about their surgeries now, talking more open and candidly about how they really feel and what the real issues of the misgendering, how it's affecting them. So I think that the conversation has started. It needs to be, a you know, our community, the gay community is, is, is they will, they, it's very difficult for them to understand um, 
trans men, because first place, they really don't like lesbians in the first place. And they just, they just consider, they, they would never consider trans men, men, because they're just so, they have such a hatred for lesbians or women who identify as either studs or they're masculine and all this kind of stuff. I, and I don't know why that is. I think because um, trans men and, and, and lesbians, or um, am I, is it okay? I think it's okay to say lesbians. I think because they show a strong male presence. They show something that a lot of the gay men in our community don't show. Because when, I'm trying to say this the right way, because a lot of it comes from gay, a lot of gay men in our, in our community are considered bottoms. Bottoms are considered femme, feminine. So I think that when they're talking to, you know, the community in a sense or acting out in a sense, it's sort of from that perspective of how they feel about themselves. Because we know 75% of most gay men are not the most masculine. And when a woman who identifies as a trans man steps in to say, well, you know, this is how I identify. And they have the courage to say, I'm a man, I feel like a man. And most gay men have a problem even identifying as gay. We're all now talking about and expressing I'm gay, I'm, or I see all different kinds of things people talk about. I'm HIV positive now, I'm gay. These are things that people didn't talk about before. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bottom and stuff. And I think that um, you, have started the conversation with the transphobia and the bullying. And that's, the, I hear a lot of it. So I know that we're talking a little bit about it. What do you think we need to do about educating the community? What do you think we need to do? I think for the most part. Um, Sorry about my rant. That's okay. We, we all have them. I had one the other day. Oh, um, right. for what? For one, um, I think that the gay men need to fully understand and appreciate all the sacrifices that lesbians have made for our rights. Mm -hmm. um, because for the most part, um, lesbians and um, actually uh, women, uh, trans people of color have are the reason that we have our rights. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we don't know enough about our history, for one. Two, we got to get over the stigma. I'm in Polk County. And, you know, most uh, uneducated straight people always view uh, gay men as weak. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, that may have something to do with it. But it's, it's perceptions of ourselves. The, the, the beauty thing about Pride is for a week, oh, we're all united. We're all together. Blah, 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 blah. And when the parade goes away and the banners go down, then the separation begins again. Mm -hmm. And we, we, in order for us to be accepted in our, in the world, we need to be accepted. We need the accepting of one another and set the example of tolerance. Mm -hmm. We can't teach tolerance to other people if we are not showing that example. So in order to stop the bullying, we need to stop within our own community and say, hey, this isn't right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have two drag sons that are both trans men. Okay. I admit that I still have a lot to learn, mm -hmm. uh, but you need to um, talk to some trans men, get to understand where they're at. Uh, I have supported, uh, uh, cut, you know, cut the boobies off pageants uh, or, you know, uh, fundraisers so that trans men can lose their, their boobies. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, I actually have a few coming up on in, in season two, a few trans men sharing their stories. I've already filmed them. They're quite interesting. And, um, you know, we, we have to be thankful 
because before trans men were trans men, they were they they they, they were women. They identified as women. So a lot of us here on this planet would not be here if it wasn't for the women who birthed us. Yes. So we need to uh, we need to understand that that the, the, the women are the creators of life um, with the help with the help of men, but they're the they're the ones that go through the pain of delivering us on this planet. Um, and sometimes when women change what we think of as norm, because trans men were not very visible for a long time. We just considered them lesbians and they were butch. That's now, butch. They're be, now they're being themselves and identifying as men and, and, and born this way and taking steps to be who they are. I think society- It's a wonderful thing. Sense, yeah, it is a wonderful thing. It, it really, it's, it's wonderful. It's a and wonderful it's, thing. Everybody can do that. You it's know, wonderful other and powerful. Uh, and uh, one thing too, um, in the news we always hear about the, these, you know, trans women getting murdered, mm -hmm. and the police really don't want to do anything about it. Uh, I've, I've heard police even say, uh, well, you know, they're weird, or they ask for it, or this other bullshit, and it just doesn't get priority. Uh, we had one murder about two or three years ago, pretty bad here in Polk County, uh, and the person was caught. And that was good, but it it um, it saddens the community. Um, but, and I'm really just even said not only with the with the trans men, but drag kings in general do not mm -hmm. get do not get the respect and the talents that they they do. We have some wonderful ones, yes, they do. Um, they do get booked, but they're not as common. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, we do know, have some. I I, I have to I, shout out to uh, to Adam ahead. Cole because Adam Cole went into All American Jet. He was the first transgender male to be in that contest, and he came third. Okay, well, he good. is setting records. He is setting. He's opened the window, and uh, I was proud to be part of that fundraiser that got him there. Okay, and. I try to be as supportive as I can. And I think that all of us, you know, there are a lot of people that are supportive and I don't want to, anybody think that everybody's against them. There's only a small amount of people with, with that do this, mm. but you have big mouths and it, it, it just, it just blows up. And then you have, and the other thing too, I'm going to say this and people are going to don't at me. Okay. And don't <laughs> hate me for it, but we got to stop all the cattiness. Okay, it's a lot of cattiness. Um, when people fail or they have a problem, the first thing that some, not all, but some want to do is go, girl, did mm -hmm. you hear about it all over social media? And by the time it actually gets onto the Facebook feed about three or four times, uh, you know, they killed, they killed Jimmy Hoffa by the time it gets done. Oh, okay, because yeah. it's all shit and shit with stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's, it, it's, I want to just say this for a minute, Russell, you know, trans men um, and have decided that they want it to be more visible, which I think is a brilliant and powerful thing. I think also that when you think about trans men who perform or drag kings who perform, I think the fact that we don't recognize it as much is because gay men really don't like I, I I'm trying not to I'm trying to say this in the right way that way because I know you understand that gay men don't really like lesbians so no matter how a lesbian identifies they still consider them just a lesbian and they don't want them in the club because I've worked at several clubs where they didn't want them in the clubs. And a lot of times when you see drag kings or trans men and, and they're trying to perform, they don't perform to the level that you see the drag queens perform. Because I think the history of drag kings 
and lesbians is these plaid shirts and jeans and kind of rough rider kind of thing. And people don't really see them as entertainers because, you know, when you look at male entertainers compared to females, it's always, we're, we're drawn more to women because of the glitz and the glamour. We're drawn more to the men because of their strong muscular physique or there's something that is eccentric about them. And when you see trans men, you don't, you, they look a lot different than what we used to because trans men back in the day used to just look like regular lesbians who identified as who, themselves or whoever they were trying to be. And I don't, I, I give, give a lot of credit to the trans men have taken on this crusade to just be who they are. So now we're seeing them visibly looking more like men. And I think that that is the first step to acceptance. And because we can talk all day, but we know, and you know, and I know as entertainers, the way you look is the way we see you. So okay, I'm gonna say because we live, I'm talking about entertainment. I'm not necessarily talking about real life. I'm talking about it. entertainment. Now, if you want us to could you, um, respect you as a man, you need to act like a man, look like a man. We could care less what's in your pants because we might not be the one sleeping with you. So we don't know if you're male or female. We know aesthetically you look like a man. And that is something that I think brings a little bit of respect because at least people know you're trying to live your truth or that's who you are. I mean, we, you know, your mother and father, your brother and your sister will always call you even after you have said, this is how I feel, this is how I look, even sometimes to this day, my, I mean, mo the, the majority of the time, I, when people ask me how I identify, I say I identify as we, us, them, they, she, he, because that's how I live. And that's what I surround myself with. So um, every now and then my sister will say, Larry, she won't just say Stephanie unless she sees me done up. But most of the time she calls me Larry. And I don't have a problem with that because for me, that is my sister. Yeah. And I know that that's what she grew up with. But I know when I'm in drag, she calls me Stephanie. And, it, it's, and, and it's almost like it's just natural. So I think aesthetically, when I'm looking, let's say I'm looking at Russell Mania, the entertainer. I'm looking at Russell Mania, the entertainer right now. If I saw Whitney Houston with no wig on and no clothes, no beaded gowns and no nothing and just walked out on stage, we would pay her no mind. So I think okay. when, you, when you look a certain way, um, you need to be clear about what, how people identify you as because sometimes I see a lot of women online screaming right now because they're wearing wigs and makeup and eyelashes and straight men are now calling real women they think that they're drag queens or transsexuals or men dressed up cross dressing and all this kind of stuff so it's it's, it's very funny go ahead okay all right I'm gonna go back a couple of things but the, the drag kings here in Florida, uh, most of them are stunning now. They mm -hmm. are fabulous entertainers. They use uh, lighting, they use uh, makeup effects, they create fake beards. They actually are on hormones and have their own beards now. Uh, they have lost their, their, their chest. Uh, they've been working out, they're on hormones, but they are fabulous entertainers. Um, and me as a booker now, as a show director, uh, my, I had my first brunch Sunday. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. 
I got That's tired cool. of waiting for somebody to ask me to perform in one. So I just said, you know what? I will start <laughs> my own. I ain't gonna right. wait anymore. I'm 56 years old. I'm too damn old to wait. But uh, I, I book, you know, and I've, you know, I have uh, gigs here in the Pink Piano where I book uh, my 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 drag sons. Um, mm -hmm. When I was show director of my bar in Tampa, we always had at least one or two drag kings in it, because to me, diversity is not just about color, but it's also diversity. And mm -hmm. even I'll say this: even as a male entertainer. I have received a lot of crap when I first came back out saying, well, you don't put makeup on. You do. What is boy George? When I do boy George, it's more makeup on than most drag queens are wearing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus all the, you know, all the, the clothing and the layers and the, okay, whatever. Um, you know, so, you know, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this out too, because what I try to do is I try to, uh, we have some great male entertainers out there, like you know, Kurt Davinci, Onyx Valentino. Uh, they're they're very great male entertainers as well. Um, I'm very fortunate this year. Last last year, I was voted for best. I was I was nominated for best drag entertainer in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. This year, I was nominated again, but I'm in the top twenty now. So, but I'm the only male entertainer in the list, and there's mm -hmm. really no drag king that list, and. That's this is stuff that's voted on by the community. But what I like to the reason I'm saying that is not to be braggadocious necessarily, but is to say that through hard work and determination and, and and marketing yourself and and branding yourself and getting it out there, you can change people's minds. If you give them a good performance, they don't care if you're wearing pumps, they don't care if you you don't care. They're there to see a good show, they pay that cover, you're doing a good job, you keep getting booked. And I'm booked steadily all over because I have, I mean, I'm headlining in Ocala this weekend. Yes. Well, congratulations. You know, I, you're, you're a smart guy. And um, I want to just say, you know, I know that a lot of times I have walked, you know, I've walked into dressing rooms and I've seen queens when they're talking about other people in the dressing room, or if, 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 if a trans man comes in the dressing mm -hmm. room, um, because I worked at Lacage for years and we had an Elvis impersonator that did Roy Orbis and Elvis. And he used to take down his chest um, and everything. And he took it very seriously. So when you saw him performing, when he put his Elvis suit on and stuff, you thought you were actually looking at Elvis. He was amazing. And um, so my point being is that I know walking into a dressing room or walking into a club, and sometimes people don't think you're going to be fabulous or you're going to be a great entertainer because of the way you look or what they perceive. And sometimes they look at drag kings and, um, and, and people that are just a little bit different than the cookie cutter that they're used to, they have something smart to say. I have gone to many gigs, to many gigs, and done shows, and I go in as Larry. Now, you can see that I am not the most masculine person. Anybody you see sitting in front of a club with six or seven suitcases is an entertainer, you would think, or I, you couldn't think I'm sitting in front of your club with all these suitcases here uh, with, a, with a cell phone, and I'm homeless. You would think, who is this? And I've had many club promoters book me. And when they see Larry show up, they don't understand. They, I think they think I'm this trans woman, transsexual, that they see with all this makeup and stuff on. And then they're shocked when they see me done up. So I do understand that sometimes people can be a little mean because I've had many, even um, clients after I do the shows, I would get out of drag and clubs would give me promotional tickets to give people free drinks. People who were in my contest that didn't win anything. I would go around and give them at the end of the show coupons, but I would do it as Larry. And a lot of these people looked at me like I was dirt. And they were like, I was like, I'm Stephanie. 
No, you're not. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I, I had that same problem when I did drag. And, and, and you get that a lot. So I understand people not sometimes when they don't recognize or understand what it is that either drag kings do or trans men there because a lot a lot of gay men they could just care less because the gay community in itself is instant gratification you look good let's go well you i, I can say you, i'm sorry well, I, that's okay i can say though the a lot of the problem is is not necessarily with that okay there are great clubs um you know like city side lounge that as I say, showcase like Morgan Lachey, who brings in drag kings, uh, gender queer people, uh, different colors, different races, different styles. Uh, and City Side has been very supportive of me and, and all male entertainers and, and drag kings, and even burlesque. Uh, oh. And that's one, it's one example in Tampa that does that. And the Copa and Ocala is very supportive of that too. So they're out there, but there are a lot of clubs who, especially in Orlando and, you know, in, in the main inside the cities that really only want to cater to the white male 20, 21 to 30. And they yeah. don't see anybody else but them. I know. <laughs> I worked in many of those clubs for years. And, you know, Russell, I can just imagine I, I, I want to say this here in a sense of is is I'm I'm actually I'm fatter than I've ever been in my whole life. I'm bigger now than I've ever been. I've never been really a very big person, and my shoulders have been big, but I've always been kind of just there. Now since the pandemic, I put on some weight. I, I feel better anyway. I feel like I feel I feel I don't know. I just feel more womanly. But I know you must feel strange even though i know a lot of the girls in the stage are bigger 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 women and yourself do you do you ever feel like when you go into a dressing room and people look around and they see you and they think and and, and do you feel like sometimes you just don't belong in the space because of the way the other entertainers treat you okay i would say this when i was doing uh, contests I had uh, young drag queens look at me and go, well, we know who's not going to win tonight or who's coming in last place. Oh. And you know what happened? They did. And who we took the trophy? Thank you. Yeah, okay. they always, don't, they always, they always, they always. Don't judge a book by its cover. And you have to understand this is done by audience applause. And I'm a regular in this bar. So, you know, unless you do something, because everybody, Everybody wants to do the do a death drop and do the splits and do all this stuff, okay? And, don't and, and they blow. don't worry about lip sync anymore. They just whoop, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that works for you. I, you know, I ain't knocking it, so please don't at me, people. It's mm -hmm. what works for you. You won't get booked on my show, okay, or any of my shows, but that's my preference. Okay? So I what do you think needs to change? What do you think we need to do? What's the first steps we need to take to try to bridge the gap? I mean, because we can talk all day, but if we're not taking action, nothing's going to change. Okay, there's two things. There's three things that can be done. Is one is that the show directors and bar owners need to have a little bit more courage and book uh, alternate entertainers, not all the time necessarily, but throw one in there throw one in there and start to slowly because if they feel isolated they're not going to come out don't give them their own night either okay we want to integrate okay mm -hmm. we don't need our own separate shows we want to all be inclusive and inclusive shows are really good and we have a lot of those mm -hmm. don't get me wrong it's just really a, a small but i'm looking at flyers okay because i'll be honest when I'm thinking about doing an event, you know, at, 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 at the place I work in, I'm looking to see what everybody else is doing. And what mm -hmm. I see is just pasty white drag queens up there, uh, you know, on a lot of clubs. Um, but on some, like, for instance, I, I, I uh, asked to perform 
in Melbourne mm -hmm. at a place. And the first thing he said, well, we really only do drag queens. I go, why? And secondly, they were like, well, why don't you come to the amateur show and audition? Well, okay, I've been doing this for 35 years. I will audition for America's Top Talent. I will audition for a TV show. I will audition for a movie role. But I am not going to audition to do Elton John, which I do for a living. I am not doing that. I got mm -hmm. a video. You want me or you don't. I don't beg for work anymore. I don't need to. Okay. But they've got to open their eyes and, and say, the one thing that, that I was told at Stonewall, the reason that they booked me is because there are people that are above 30 that love the song choices that I make. And they feel entertained because they can relate. They can relate. Mm -hmm. and that's having a diverse diversity. If you if you have a diverse cast, you're going to have a diverse audience. And you're you're going to get those people house. over thirty. You're going to get those people over house. thirty, and they'll come out mm -hmm. and they will spend money, and you know, and they will come support it because there's somebody up there like them. That's right. And and, and they got to learn that, and a lot of ours have learned that, and a, and a lot of ours haven't. You know, uh, I said I used to say this all the time when I worked in one of the clubs up the street from my house. It was the most popular club in the city, and I used to say that all the time. There's no, there's no real diversity here. Everybody here is white, good looking, bodies of death, and the only reason I'm here is because you think I'm beautiful and I'm funny. But I better not step over the line because you're ready to throw me out the door because the next young one that doesn't do any talking on the microphone, it doesn't do this here, is ready to step in my spot. But the reason this place is packed is because of me and my mouth. And mm -hmm. probably because of the way I look. And I know gay white men love beautiful things to look at. And to yes. play with, hopefully play with. So they're more likely. It's uh, easy for me to bring them up onto the stage for the contest because of the way I look. So I know that. But um, and also that I was funny and made them laugh and stuff like that. But I do find that um, we're going to have to make a real. We are so sociably looking at people that that's that's all we see them as, as 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 the way they look but i have found when you have a diverse house the place is packed and rocking yes and when i found that you had the other group whether they're all white like you said between 18 and 30 everybody's muscular or they had the you know, there are certain clubs that certain groups can go to and this and that and certain events for this one and that one. When you have these things, it puts in people's mind, I can only go to that bar. Because th that's what I'm looking for. Because I know it's easier for me to integrate into that, even though you probably all should probably be going to mix bars so we can understand different cultures, experience different people, experience different conversations with different people and be around different people. We can dance with different people, do these things. This makes us learn and become more acceptable of others. And that is something yes. the gay community is going to have to start to do is to be more diverse and to understand diversity, we have to put it in people's faces. Because, exactly. Because it's only now, going to learn. Mm -hmm, and because now the, the world is not just white, we're starting to see visible everything. And social media is prime example of that, even though it's controlled mostly by older white men who have uh, older white men with that Christian kind of mentality or that just that money-making mentality of this is the group that spends the most money. So we're going to cater to that group. And it's, you know, Russell, there's nothing wrong with businessmen wanting to make money. 
But to make change and to make more money, you need diversity. You need understanding because you cut yourself out of markets that you could be working in. You should be, as Russell Mania, comedian, you should be able to go in where any other comedian in the world should be able to go to and perform. And I do. And it's not, this is what I don't like. And I said this the other night in, in a conversation, I had it with somebody um, at one of the pageants. And I think she was really upset with me because I, I, I said this to her. I know you are Miss Gay so-and-so. Why is the word gay still there today? Why are you Miss Gay? Why aren't you just Miss whatever the name of the title of the pageant is or the state is? Why are you Miss Gay? And she didn't like that. She couldn't understand it. She thought I put her in a trap or something. I thought, why don't you, you're not Miss Gay? Who are you talking? Who are you talking to? Like, who are you? Who are you? Who is? Who are you talking to? You're telling gay men in a gay bar that you're a Miss Gay. Why don't you take the gay out? Why are you Miss Gay? They already know you're gay. They already know you're a trans woman. They know this. Why are you putting this gay in there? And I thought, I've always said that. Any pageant I've ever done, and I promoted many of these things, I never put the word gay. Because I don't think that that is, 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 the, is the name of the pageant. So I just don't understand it. I do. I am, listen, I understand if you want to be inclusive and you want to be looked at like other women in a pageant system, you want to enter Miss America or Miss USA, nobody is going to stand, no company is coming to go, go get that girl who won Miss Gay this or Miss Gay that. They want to know you were Miss Arkansas, Miss Ocala, or Miss Tampa, or Miss Lakeland. That's what people want to know. And this is the mentality that women in these pageants need to have not Miss Gay this. Even I say the same thing about Black pageants. You don't need to say Miss Black America. You need to come up with something. It's just Miss, this is, the pageant is Miss America. She just happens to be Black. We know that there's a need for, a, for Black pageants, that, but there's a need for Black pageants that include inclusiveness. If you consider it just Black, you're isolating your audience. You're telling the world there's no place for you but at this pageant. Yeah, at you know, the, but things are changing now because we have yes. transgender women that are in the actual uh, Miss, Miss America in, in, in various state pageants. I think even five years ago, that was not possible. Mm -hmm. And although it happened, because I do remember something happened in the 80s and they found out and they, they took our state title away, which I don't think is fair. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's how they did it back then. Um, but I mean, this thing, so I'll take change. And, and, and I mean, I, I understand why somebody will say that because we've been trained to say that. Mm -hmm. um, we've been trained to say that when I did passions when I was younger, it, you know, I, it was always Miss Gay this, Miss Gay that. Because we, I think at one point we wanted to say, um, we're going to have our own. The, the problem with the gay community, we've always tried to set ourselves up like the heterosexual world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess to try to get accepted or something, I don't know, or maybe it's just a baseline of something that we understood, uh, even to the point where I say my husband, you know, I say my husband because I don't know of a better word to say you know we are married mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. no I, I don't know what else to say but it's because we 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 never were brought brought up that way mm -hmm. now what i'm seeing now though and this is the problem growing up gay when you know our age because we're, mm -hmm. we're around the same age yeah um, we we didn't have the option 
of really dating when we were in high school. We didn't have the option of being public with our affections or who we, who we loved and all that. We have this new generation that doesn't have that anymore, which is great, mm-hmm. which is great. Okay. I feel that, that our generation did that. And so the other people will feel safer. The, the problem I have is that it's not really a problem, but some of them don't understand or appreciate the history of which our generation sacrificed that they could go out and be who they are. And, you know, um, still, I'm in Polk County. I still probably cannot hold my husband's hand going through the mall. Um, try to somebody beat me up. Look at me. Okay, well, mm-hmm. that was I'm a big guy. I will sit on you. I will beat the <laughs> crap out of you. I will beat the crap out of you, and then I'll do your hair when I'm done with you. So, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, Russell, I want to say thank you for being on the show today. Um, hopefully, we, 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 we've had a long conversation here. I'm sure we'll have lots more. I'll have you back again um, when we're able to do a little bit of the entertaining, because with the copyright laws, we have a lot of things that we're going to have to get past. But um, I want to thank you on your enlightenment today. So in closing, what are you, what's your advice in closing for, for transphobia and bullying? What, what, what's your advice? My advice is, it's the golden rule. You treat people like you want to be treated. And just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's wrong. And just because you don't understand something, uh, you know, it's who they are and you have to respect their space and who they are because you know what a lot of them are just now coming to the realization of who they are uh they're emotionally a little bit more delicate and we need to be supportive and say hey look hey be you Mm -hmm. because you know i mean i'm allowed to be me but you know what it took me i wasn't in i was in my 40s before i fully accepted everything who i was i drank a lot to cover a lot of it up and now I'm like, I am me. I am, I am Mania Henry Roar. Um, I am, I am who I am. And um, let everybody be who they are. Just love each other. And if you don't have something nice to say, then shut up. Okay. There you, go. you keep and your opinion to yourself. And there you go. And on that note, we're going to, we're, we're going to close off. I want to say thank you so much today, Mr. Russell Mania. I'm going to just say this to the audience and then I'll say goodbye. Um, thank you. You know, it's, it's simple, people. You respect me, I respect you. Regardless of how you identify, who you love, um, we're going to have to learn how to get to know each other, understand each other, and respect each other for just who we are and who we decided that we want to be or who we feel that we were born to be. Um, And realizing that diversity is an amazing thing and learning from different people and different cultures and educating yourselves on these um, issues and these cultures and these backgrounds is fascinating. It's like when you were in school, you were so eager to read Edgar Allan Poe, or you were so eager to know about Michelangelo and why he cut his ear off. Isn't it fascinating to know? Wouldn't it be fascinating to know that you can go to different parts of the world now on the internet and talk to people that you never in the world would imagine that you could talk to? or be attracted to, to see that you can talk to people of different races and go, hmm, somebody lied to me. They're not like that. And they're not like this. I talk to them. I I understand them. I see, you know, what they eat, what they do. And it's, it's a wonderful thing and a powerful thing to get, educate yourself and um, just, you know, understand that diversity is a powerful energy and it's something we all need to do and understand. So on that note, <coughs> excuse me, I was trying not to do that because it was yeah. it was killing because I've been talking all the time. I was like, oh my God, well, 
And in closing, um, thank you. And understanding who you are and understanding that people are just who they are. Sometimes it's better not to try to overanalyze anything and overthink it. You know, just let people be who they are and it'll all be better for us all in the long run. So thank you, Russell Mania, for being on here today and educating us about transphobia and bullying and a lot of other subjects. And hopefully we educated some people out there that just have an open mind. Think for yourself. Don't worry about what others have to say. Just be you. Just be you. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show. Um, and thank you, Mr. Russell Mania, for explaining it all to us. And you got me ranting most of the conversation. So hope. thank you, sir, very much. And we will chat again. Until next time, my friends, thank you guys for supporting season two of Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show. Have a blessed week, y'all. Thank you, Russell. Bye. Oh. <coughs>